Hi guys, Tyler Forster for RunItOnce.com. Today we're going to be going over some hands where I made some hero calls on the river. We start here with Ace Jack off. Um, I face a three bet. I call. It's a mixed four bet. Um, calling is as reasonable as four betting here. Um, I get a small pro bet on the flop, which means calling. I think is mandatory. I'm sure there's some small frequency raise, but call is by far the standard. Especially with the Kings on board, which is going to benefit him a little bit because of the Ace-King combos that he has and the Tens combos that I don't. Um, on the turn, I face a half-pot sizing here, which I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Um, I don't think this is a board texture where this bet size is particularly preferred. Um, I mean, you have plenty of draws. A pair of queens would still be a solid value bet at this point because you're going to have 10x here at pretty high frequencies, these ace-jack combos, things like nine. So it's not necessarily clear why half pot was chosen by my opponent. Um, but with the over cards and the backdoor flush draw, this is going to be a mixed combo, and this time I rolled to call. And so I made my call. And now on the river, the king pairs, which isn't... Um, Obviously, doesn't necessarily benefit me because of the lack of kings. At the same time, though, it improves every hand in my range. Because, obviously, he didn't improve his bluffs, semi-bluffs, in any way. Um, and he goes ahead and jams here for 1.5x pot. And it, this is a situation, I think, where people will overbluff. Basically, if we look at a pio sim, and we'll do this here in a second, what, what we're going to see is, is that on these trip runouts basically are my opponent i need to make hero calls i have no choice with this i have to make a hero call at some frequency now whether that hero call is a pair of eights or ace jack like something has to be hero called and so using the heuristic where i kind of mangle his value betting range here because aces and jacks are cut in half actually king jack and ace jack are cut too I think that this combo is going to be slightly better here to call than eights and nines. And I don't want to call it at pure frequencies because now all of a sudden he could, of course, just value bet 10x on me and it would be a disaster. But I think at some frequency I can get away with this call with this type of hand. That it is kind of a classic bluff catching hand. And so I went ahead and I made the call in this scenario. And he turns over. Queen Jack of Spades, which I don't know is necessarily a great bluff in these, this situation, but it's probably not a bad one. Um, basically, I think it's probably hard to have a bad bluff here just because of how loose th these ranges really get to this point. That I, I think every player is going to generate a fold frequency. So he's probably not losing a ton of money with this type of bluff, but obviously I, I like to see it here with Ace Jack. So we'll go ahead and look at it in Pi. All right, so I've built this Pio model. Uh, basically, the idea was is that for the most part in these situations, the three bet ranges are very mixed. In fact, if you look at database analysis, I mean, there's literally every combo represented in a three bet range in position, small blind versus big blind. Of course, it's going to be centered more at the higher strength combos, but at the end of the day, I mean, you can have a complete range of different strategies. And this is actually built from a Pio sim. And one of the things that comes very clear from that Pio sim is like Pio likes to just kind of have a lot of random hands in this range. And because the sim was a simplification of the game, I don't expect this to be the exact right mix, but I think it's a nice starting point for, for a discussion about how we, we might approach this situation. So here we get um, a high-frequency C-bet. This is probably higher in practice, um, though I mean, maybe people check Jack-9 there. I'd be awfully tempting not to. You can see immediately that this is a pretty low EV board for me, which obviously means that this raise frequency is way down from typical raises against small sizings. Um, we can go ahead and see that I'm going to be, of course, be mixed raising my kings on the flop and then calling any pocket pair along with some suited aces. So these ranges get really broad really quickly. In fact, queen eight of clubs is actually kind of the break even calling hand on this board. So, I mean, we're really, really wide in these situations, uh, which makes sense. You've got a super small bet, so you can't just let him take the pot. And his range is very, very erratic. So every single combo is going to have some equity here. Um, it's even if you decide to call something like eight, seven of hearts, uh, I mean, it's only a small mistake on this type of board texture in equilibrium, just because of how erratic the, the original preflop ranges were. So we catch, uh, 
a blank. I believe it was the two. And you can see that this, I just solved for this medium sizing because I assume that was the sizing he's using. One of the things you'll notice, of course, is how erratic the bluffing regions are. Um, they're really just, you know, any sort of queen, any sort of jack. Some queen-jack combos that end up in here at kind of lowish frequencies because of the way the preflop sim was solved out, and then some random ace-3, ace-4 combos. So, I mean, we're all over the board again with, with ranges. And you can see that ace-jack immediately becomes a mixed call. Um, so, basically, that's kind of the region that Pi was targeting to make indifferent to calling this turn. He's not trying to make a 10 indifferent. The 10 is just assumed to be called. And he's also forcing these small pocket pairs to defend as well. Because if we start with a series of small bets here, we obviously can't fold a lot of our combinations or all of a sudden the bluffs are going to pop way up in value. And so essentially the only regions that are really getting dunked at or folded here at pure frequencies are just ace-x and, and queen-x and jack-9. Um, and now when the king hits the river, um, you can see that he does end up with a bluffing frequency here. But one of the things that happens in this piosim that may or may not happen in practice is is that basically the value range starts at jacks. And so essentially his value range here is going to be pretty heavily centered on jacks plus. And his bluffs can be pulled from, you know, any sort of queen X, jack X, jack X region. Um, in practice, I kind of even expect some ace X's to bluff here, like ace four. Um, and then you can go ahead and look at this calling region, and what you can see is is that, you know, given the perfect balance of Pio in this situation, 10x is indifferent to calling. Um, but we would even maybe consider calling 8s and 9s at a little low frequency, and you can see that Ace-Jack actually sneaks in here as a low frequency call too. I think in practice, because of the way this range is structured, where it's likely that his value hands are going to come from this region, pretty exclusively, but his bluffing hands are going to be a much more erratic array than just Queen X and Jack X. The, my, my assumption here is that Ace Jack actually just outperforms slightly. Um, and so I, I made this call at a slightly higher frequency than, than, than Pio did. I think I was at, um, oh, we missed the spade on the turn. I, this analysis is a little off. Um, we can see here that Pio is a maybe a little bit more preferential to having the ace of spades here if we get there and i guess we're i guess the ace of spades now is a mixed fold the way this thing works out which is pio magic in my opinion um so maybe combinatorially i made a small mistake with this combo but i think this analysis idea that basically jacks queens and aces being a large proportion of the value range and the fact that those bluffs are really specifically picked to to interact with the queen jack region and queen jack is not a pure jam here where he jammed instantly um it, it would lead me to believe that basically this call was probably slightly profitable at, at, at equilibrium or it, whatever strategy he was playing. You can see that Queen Jack of Spades actually checks here and he actually expects to win a showdown every once in a blue moon here against some other combo. So we, uh, I guess there's some sneaky combo here of random spades or something that wins. he wins against or maybe he chops against another Queen Jack combo which is more likely. Um, so I made a seemingly least call down and I think that Pio may have approved of it at least in theory uh, aside from the, the turn play here so I, I guess I, I got my five dollars in my two thousand dollar pot back which I always consider a, a nice success um, all right so on to the next one this one I think is fairly erratic so you could analyze, analyze this from a PO perspective and from a player perspective this particular player had been losing heavily um, he, for whatever reason, things just weren't working his way. And rather than play tighter when that happened, he'd started to play looser. Um, and so he'd bluff raised like three straight rivers and he, he was just playing very, very aggressively. Um, this combo, I, I think we'll, we'll take a look here and see that we definitely can check raise this type of board texture with backdoor straight draws, backdoor flush draws on, on a paired board. I should have enough equity to do it. In fact, I, I may even have enough equity to check call. On the queen, this is going to be mixed because if I bet every single draw here, I'm going to be way out of line toward draws. And given his emotional state, I thought that checking was probably the preferred line because that sort of player who likes to bluff raise rivers is probably jamming here for protection for a fair bit. So I, I'm really not 
that hyped in this situation to just go ahead and get jack high um, all in on the turn and it's quite frankly it'd be losing and so we catch a small probe here on the turn which I, again i think he was a regular so this sizing's probably indicative of something like twos plus um there's a lot of emphasis here to basically to make protection bets on this type of board um, because if you have a pair of deuces like every, any two cards has like 25 percent equity and a lot of those draws have quite a lot um, so i mean this bet's going to be high frequency and really fairly fairly widespread i expect anything from deuces to aces and everything in between um, so i clearly have enough equity to call maybe you could consider a check raise um, it's a little bit dicey with my interaction with that board um, without the clubs it's always going to be lower value than with the clubs um, and then the queen pairs which is always a fun card and he mashes pot now basically the value region here for this mashed pot bet i believe is exclusively queen x Though maybe he might think that I don't slow play enough 10s here that he could mash pot with 10x2. Um, under the idea that I might get... Under the idea that I might get... Uh, sorry about that blip in the, the top of the screen there. I've got this setting in Skype and I absolutely cannot turn it off. Um, there, there appears to be no way to turn that off in Windows 8. So if anyone knows how to turn it off in Windows 8, let me know. Alright, so... With this sizing here, basically he's saying he has 10x probably centered higher on queen x. But I think what happens here is he's actually not going to bet the sizing consistently with 10x because one of the possible check call combos that's going to sneak into this range at fairly high frequencies is queen x. And so if I had queen 9 or queen jack here and chose to check raise, like those are going to be high frequency calls. Whereas I don't also think that ASEX probably uses this sort of bet sizing on the river because it's a little bit unclear what exactly happens if you do it. Um, do you get consistently called here by Jack and King High? And how many King and Jack Highs does, do I have? So those hands seem to be out. So it seems like exclusively a Queen X value range. Um, which is possible, like he probably floats Queen Jack here at some frequency. He definitely has Ace Queen of Clubs. He probably has Ace Queen with a club. But if we start just kind of rolling back through this hand, if you start with a range of deuces plus here, there's a lot of hands here with absolutely no showdown value. Deuces, threes, fours, fives, six X, six five, six seven, seven six, nine eight, nine seven, eight seven. 9 8, 9 7, 8 7. Like, this would be actually be the sort of situation where he probably has to force himself to give up, and I think we'll see this here in a second, with something like 7 high. And traditionally stuck players who are trying to win every pot are not going to show down 7 high at any frequency. Um, it's not generally a great heuristic to show it down, um, and he really caught an unfortunate ed edge case here for that. So if you're not willing to show down 9 high here... I think the jack has to be good at pretty high frequencies, and so I went ahead and make kind of a very loose call down here, um, which I'm sure given his mental state, or at least what his mental state appeared to be in game, he, I, I can't imagine he was very happy. and He may have broken a keyboard. And he went ahead and turned over 9-7 of diamonds, so that's a pretty damn big bluffing range. Excuse my language. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in Pio. All right. So I went ahead and built this Pio preflop model. This is probably a little bit looser than I can actually play in the spot due to the fact it was a 3x raise. So these offsuit nines are likely not existent in my range. Um, you can see also a little bit of tightening here on the back end with the suited junk and the ace off combos. I think some of the model, at least the model I was working with, called down to like king seven or king six at some frequency. He's opening up 30 in the model, which might be low for this type of player. If you've got a stuck player who's feeling aggressive, it's kind of likely that this number is closer to 35. Like 10-9 off probably sneaks into that range at least sometimes, as does 10-5 suited. I mean, they just want to win pots, and, and they're going to try very hard to, to win those pots. With that, it's a super high equity board for him uh, with the offsuit 10s in his range and the overpairs. He's going to be betting at really high frequencies, and you can see he gets about 66% of this pot with this strategy. So this is a decent spot for him overall. Um, and then you can see with me in this situation, I've got a, a pretty aggressive check raising range with a nice overfold frequency. And I think other coaches have 
covered this in depth on paired boards. Basically, I'm going to overfold, and I'm going to compensate for this overfold by check raising at a higher frequency than I normally would. And so that that's exactly what you see here. Um, it's where, you know, 22% rather than your typical, uh, rather than your typical 15. Jack nine is of course mixed in these situations. I tend to do it a little bit more frequently probably than Pio suggests because the, the call downs here are a little bit lighter than you, you generally expect. Um, he's supposed to call, I think, any suited ace and stuff like that. And I, I think there's players that do this, but it, overall, I think your your fold frequencies generally trend a little bit higher. Um, we're talking moving this from three-tenths of a big blind to two-tenths of a big blind in value. Um, so we see the call. Now the Queen of Hearts comes out in this situation, and you can see that Jack-9 here has to be mixed. Now, in a lot of scenarios, we can find range bets with, with our draws if, if another draw completed. But with this particular spot, I mean, I have a lot of draws. And so there's no way I can ever bet 100% of them on this turn. I have to check sometimes. And so this is one of the combos that I, I chose to check this time. And you can see the balancing aspects of this, right? It's not like you're just supposed to check in a draw. You're also supposed to check some 10x as well. Um, so, so you're basically trying to, you're basically trying to balance both of those ranges. And you can see the queen jack here is a pure check. So once that happens, um, again, if you followed these models in any detail, you know, you'll know that the small bet here comes in at super high frequencies. Um, basically, this is the preferred sizing here because I have these give ups that he wants to put pressure on again. So it's almost analogous to the C bet situation where you've got this range that's too, uh, too weak. And so you can use a small C bet to blow him off the worst parts of the range. Now I've got a check raise check line, which means that I've got some give ups in this range that just didn't connect with the board. And so you're going to see this small bet come in at pretty high frequencies. What happens, I, I think a lot in practice, is that once you know this heuristic, it gets awfully tempting here to bet a lot of these hands at really high frequencies. Because fours through deuces here are hands that really prefer protection, and if I've misstructured this checking range, they're going to be really high EV bets. The same with the 9-7 combo we had in practice. So, I mean, if you want to think about this more as a player pool strategy rather than a pio strategy, I think what you'll see is, is basically a movement toward more pro betting in this situation than Pio would ever would ever suggest. Um, if you look here, we're, we're only betting about half the time with the small sizings. And here, we're going to develop a double check raising region centered, of course, around 10x. And then some of the best draws. And it looks like in this particular scenario, I end up with an edge case where Jack-9 is actually a better check raise. I don't generally put a lot of stock in this sort of in this sort of simulation, because when the options are that close to each other, we're talking a tenth of a blind in a something like a 35 big blind pot. Realistically, what Pio is reacting to is the specific strategy that Pio has chosen as the counter. And so if I think the fellow is going to overcall here, which is distinctly likely given his mood, I, I don't think that number is a valid number on evaluating how profitable the check raise is. So we go ahead and we make the call. And we catch a blank on the river. Now, you'll see what should happen. And what should happen here is that this card is really terrible for him because Queen X is a pure check call. And once that happens, basically all he's trying to do is extract a little bit of money from 10X with, with this range. And so what you get is a small, uh, a small bet at, high free, at low frequencies. In fact, this board is so bad for him um, he gets, uh, I think, a third of the pot back, that he can't even bet threes through deuces at pure frequencies. So it, it's one of these situations where these ranges have changed so radically by the river. I started with a, as a gigantic dog on the flop, and he had a nice profitability spot on the turn. If we go ahead and look at the EB, he's capturing 66% of it. And now once the call comes in, he's turned into a spot where he makes absolutely no money. Um, he's only basically his queen X region makes some money. Um, his check downs make some money. And you can actually see that in game, he didn't realize how strong his nine seven suited was because nine seven is a check here captures a quarter of the pot, which makes sense. If you kind of think through this line from a pile perspective, which means that some fr function of my range, not a ton of it, but it, it always exists in pile land 
is some sort of 6x combo. And then some function of my check call range here is going to be 6x on the turn. And there's also going to be some calls like 9 8 of clubs that are, are just mandatory from Pio's perspective. Where I've got too much equity to check raise and I've got too little to, or too little, too much equity to check raise, I guess, in this situation at these sizes because I can get blown off my hand. But obviously too much equity to fold. And so I just have to check call. So with all of those things coming in, now you see that basically this is a situation where your player type has to be very, very tight. There's really no other way around it. The, the, the best strategy here is to play a very, very tight strategy. Jack-10 is a pot-sized bet. It basically loses seven big blinds, or actually 13 big blinds compared to a check. Um, something like King-Queen suited with an optimal calling range, this probably actually turned out better for him because I really did expect the overbluff. It is actually going to chop off a little value as well. So once we pop this in, we can now see that this Jack-9 combo actually sneaks in as a fractional call in this situation. And in fact, 10x is the, the portion of the range that needs to be mixed folded because of how tight that original strategy is. And so when you end up in the situation against an aggressive opponent, I mean, he clearly plays poker and he probably plays poker for a living. Um, but you can see in these situations where essentially that entire range starts to move down below 9 high, that this is a really easy spot for him to overbluff at very high frequencies. And so that's exactly what we got in game, is he actually picked a combo that was worth seven big blinds as a check back to try to run a basically a big bluff in, in a non-existent region in Pio land. Um, essentially, I think the only hand that really prefers giant bats here is tens, which makes sense. It's, it has the, it's quads, and I can have trip top full at pretty damn high frequencies. So I really like my call on this hand. I thought it was fun. 